Larger corporations often consist of multiple business units. The management in these cases has to constantly ask themselves, how should they best manage each of these businesses? Fortunately, there's a systematic framework that can guide management to prioritize in which business to invest, which one to protect, which one to harvest or divest. This model was developed by McKinsey in the 1970s for the conglomerate General Electric, thus GE McKinsey Matrix. What does it look like and how to use it? So, let's dive into it. The GE McKinsey Matrix is fundamentally a portfolio analysis. It compares groups of products with their competitive power and market attractiveness. The portfolios themselves comprise the full suite of products or services that a business offers to the market. In the context of General Electric, the matrix was created so that the company could analyze the composition of each of its 150 portfolios, otherwise known as Strategic Business Units. SBU. Ultimately, the GE McKinsey matrix allows a large, decentralized company to determine where best to invest its cash. It does this by allowing the company to judge each SBU on its own merits according to metrics which determine future viability. Let's look into the structure of the GE McKinsey matrix. The horizontal axis represents the competitive strength of the individual SBU whereas the vertical axis represents the industry attractiveness. Both competitive strength and industry attractiveness are determined by a weighted score, calculated from the relevant factors that apply to each. For the industry attractiveness, the determined factors can include market size and potential for growth, buyer or supplier power, or threat of new entrants. For the competitive strengths, these factors include market share and growth, profit margins, manufacturing costs, customer base, or customer loyalty. Each of the axis has then three score levels, high, medium, and low. This creates a matrix with a total of nine cells. The nine cells are then divided by a diagonal line running from the bottom left to the top right of the matrix. When a product is placed on the matrix, its position relative to the diagonal line determines the strategy that should be used. The cells that lie above the diagonal are part of the growth strategy. The ones that lie on the diagonal belong to the protect category. The cells below the diagonal constitute the harvest category. The position a business occupies on the matrix drives the future strategy. Let's analyze each potential strategy one by one. The growth category consists of three cells. The first one is called protect position. This represents the business units that are doing extremely well and have strong potential. One should invest in such businesses and maintain this position. The second cell in the growth category is called invest to build. You should focus on your company's strengths here and also make vulnerable areas stronger. And finally, the third cell, known as build selectively, represents those business units in which focusing on a limited number of strengths in order to face rivals is the right strategy. And in this case, there are no more strengths or competitive advantages left. One should strategize withdrawal from the market. Great.